Hey guys, Carrot Sifty here with my last review for the year, and this time I'll be reviewing the Deluxe Power Dizer and Machinima Sigler from Conrider Force. So the Power Dizer is a transforming exosuit that can help Force in battle, and the Machinima Sigler is Conrider Force's bike or rider machine. So the set includes the two things that are specified in the set name which are the PDG-3000, a.k.a. the Power Dizer, and the ORB-40F, a.k.a. the Machine Massigler. So we'll look at the Power Dizer first. So we have it right here, and the... well, most of it is in this orangish-yellow color of plastic. I say orangish-yellow because it's not quite yellow, but it's not quite orange. The thing is that it's a yellow color that leans very much towards being orange. So what we've got here is a very robotic body structure. That's a little bit kind of gorilla-like. Or at least not quite human. We've got the front section here, which makes up the main cockpit. We have this kind of a face shield here, which has uh, this kind of white border with a little bit of this glossy blue paint covering these two kind of window panels. Uh, this red, maybe siren part up here that is painted red. This black piece here. Also, coming down, we've got uh, some details on these two front sections. Some kind of vents here that are in this gunmetal metallic gray paint. The uh, this main black part with a little bit of uh, orange yellow paint, and this little vet these little vents that hide the speaker, which is right in there. We have the two shoulders, which are identical and symmetrical to each other which consists of these kind of curved parts with some little bits of painted white at the ends. A little bit of what would seem like kind of caution scraping, though these black pieces aren't just painted on, they're also molded and raised. They're molded to be raised. And coming down, we have the arms, which have a little black piece right here. And the hand pieces here. Moving down, we have the waist joint. And it <coughs> it's pretty interesting how it has this really bulky upper torso, and yet it comes down and has this pretty thin waist. Also has the hips and the legs, which are bent like this. They don't go straight. They rather bend forward and then bend back a little bit. Coming down to the feet, right here, which has more of that plastic and more gunmetal metallic paint. As well as the feet, which you'll notice are wheels, as well as you'll see wheels on the knees. Moving right, <coughs> moving right to the back, we have this jet booster piece, which will come into play more so later. A little bit of green right here. At the back of the arm, which have some silver striping there. These pieces here. See the back of the hands. And we have the back of the legs, back of the feet. And that's basically all the and that is uh, basically all the details you have. But it is a lot of detail. There's even a little bit of black paint in on the sides of the hips right there. So articulation-wise, you might not think it would have that much, but surprisingly, this has a, this really has a pretty good amount of articulation. The arms rotate 360 degrees, bend forward at this shoulder joint or elbow joint. that much can swivel all the way around like so bend out this far and then can bend back even has a little bit of shoulder movement as you can move the shoulders up and down like that 
There's also a secret joint where, by just going under here, with this you can actually fold out a couple of hands. And the same goes for this side. The hands themselves are singular mold pieces. The fingers are not articulated, just designed like that. In the waist, you have a little bit of outward movement. It goes just to two positions. The legs go forwards a little bit, and the backwards movement doesn't have another joint until that point, and that's for the, that's for the transformation. The leg has a set, another joint that goes out like this. The foot can swivel up and down like so, and then also swivel side to side. The interesting thing about this is that most of these joints are transformation joints, and very few are added in for articulation, but it's interesting that for a figure like this that is designed with a gimmick of transforming and having the built-in sounds, that has this level of articulation. And speaking of the sounds, we have the on off switch here. This includes built-in cell batteries, so you just pull a tab and you can already play with it. So just switching it on like this, we'll get a startup sound. And so the sounds are all activated through this here, which is a button. So pressing it once will get you this sound. Then you stop it, you press again. So that was a kind of so it started out by saying its name, and then it started with a build-up running sound, and then pressing that again, you got kind of a tacking sound, which is most likely a tackle. So there's that, and then a secondary sound you have for this is pressing again. Not sound that builds up, but more of a moving parts and then walking sound. Then stopping again. Powers it down. And so that's it for the first mode, which is called Dizer mode. And yeah, I don't think Dizer is a real word. Uh, they just. That just arises from the name, Power Dizer. So. Next, we can transform it to its second mode, which is vehicle mode. To do that, you start by taking arms and rotating them to this point. Then folding them in and then bring around these handlebars. Like so. Then take the legs, rotate the feet outward like that. Move them forward one notch like that. Then fold them out. Fold this in like so. Then take this peg here and clip it into this spot right here. Just like that and do the same with the other one. in, make sure that the wheels are both at the same position, so that they're basically flat with the others. Then pull up this, pull up this piece to reveal a, to become a seat backing, and pull out these two feet panels, or footrests. And there you have it, uh, excellently knocking down that in vehicle mode. So here it's designed kind of like a lunar rover, which of course fits in with Forza's space theme. 
and yeah, it's big, so just so that I don't knock it, my Sigler over anymore, I'm just going to set that back here. So it rolls well because it has two small wheels here, plus it has these four wheels here, 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 and here. Also, while in this mode, you can bring any of your FMCS figures. For the sake of this review, I've brought in base state, and you can have it ride on vehicle mode. So for that, you have a seat here, and then you have these handlebars here. So basically, you just kind of have to, uh, well, really just position him correctly. So you got that there. And it, it's best to first have him grabbing onto the handlebars and then kind of maneuver the rest of his body into a generally suitable position. So, just curving the hands around like that. And getting the other one. So, then readjusting the by and at least trying to get the feet onto the footrests. There is a thing that this does kind of highlight. Uh, this highlights some problems that can come from, well, the level of articulation that a figure like this has. You are kind of forced to have them kind of positioned like this. But like that, you do have him riding on vehicle mode. And vehicle mode also has a sound to it. So you just press the button again. And you have a kind of rolling sound. And you can stop that by pressing the button again. Although the interesting thing is that at this point in the ser at so far in the series, not once has Forza actually ridden on the Power Dazzler in vehicle mode, namely because it's actually primarily remote controlled. So there's that. Despite that, it is a pretty cool vehicle mode and does make a good use of the design and has a nice transformation there, but that's not the last of its modes. Specifically, this has three modes. So now we can change it into the third mode. So to do that, you store back away the handlebars. Just like that, and fold back in the footrests. Then you're going to want to come here, detach the wheels from the main body. Then fold them back all the way around like so. Straighten out the feet. Kind of flatten them out like that, and then fold them in like so, and do the same on the other side. Just clicking everything. Do that like that. And folding it all the way like that. From there, you fold out the arms all the way like so. Turn around like that, then fold up the arms like this, and you'll hear that sound, then click it into place, and now you have it third mode, which is tower mode. So here it's become a launch tower, 
Like this, there's also a hinge that allows it to bend forward like so. And that will actually come into play later. For now, I'll set this aside and move on to the bike. So this is Forza's rider machine, the machine, the machine Masigler. And immediately that name comes off as being kind of weird, but from what I've learned, it comes from uh, the Japanese word that basically equates to full speed ahead. Now, like just about every rider machine, this is modeled after a real-life bike, specifically modified from a real-life Japanese motorcycle. For this one, it is modified from the Honda XR250R, which is a trail bike. So it's got a very lean and sleek profile to it. Now the XR250 series is no stranger to the Conrad series, because the XR250 model has been used on past bikes such as Denos Den Bird, Getax Getac Extender, and Gills's Gills Raider. Now, from what we can see of it, it is essentially modeled after a rocket ship, which is pretty fitting for Forza. We've got the front nose part with a little faux windshield, some little bits of lights here on the side, a general nose cone shape. You've got the handlebar here with rear view mirrors. Have it the seat that extends all the way back. Then you have the tail fins, like a rocket ship, and even some booster engines in the back. And in the show, these are actual boost. It's an actual booster engine that actually can basically emit flames and boost him forward. We also have some bike detailing here. You've got the spokes on the wheels, molding on the wheels itself, and these are just plastic wheels. You've got the engine, we've got the chains, have the footrest, we also have the kickstand here, which folds up and down. Now as far as features goes, the only thing it really does on its own is that its wheels spin and it can roll, and of course, being for this bike, you can have your Forza figures right on it. So, getting him on there, just going to, once again, position him so that his hands grab onto the handlebars. With one there. And one there. Then kind of just reposition his body so that it's a generally good position that actually has him sitting on the bike. Just adjusting there, moving that inwards, and doing the same with the other leg. And just getting him like that, straighten it out the body. I mean, this does require a little bit of uh, fiddling with to get into a really good position. Just kind of got to straighten things out and make sure that he is really holding on to the handlebars. Another thing to note is that they are bendable, so you can you should also kind of you know, straighten out them like so, so that you don't bend the plastic out of shape. Now one thing I suggest is to try to have his legs close into the sides of the bike and have it so that 
you have his ankles basically in front of the footrests. Especially for what I'm going to be showing you guys next. So, we uh, can't, you can see that he does fit on the bike quite nicely. And can actually ride around on it. However, the reason why this was included with the set is because the machine with Sigler is compatible with the Power Dizer in Tower Mode. So for this, you're going to want to set the bike... Well, first you're going to want to put up the kickstand, then set the bike on here, and using these two clips down here, secure the bike in place. Like that, and while you're doing that, you can press this to get the sound from the show. So that's the sound it makes when the bike attaches, and right, just rides on and attaches like this. Now while it's set down on this in the show, the Power Dizer has missiles that come from back here, but there is nothing on the actual toy to represent that. But that's not really all that bad, because that's not really why it attaches. The real reason why it attaches starts by putting it back like this, and you clip in the boost rocket right back here, where you saw a peg earlier on. So, this is why I said it was important to have his ankles by the footrests. So that way he doesn't fall backwards. Because if you have him positioned in some ways where he doesn't really have all that much to hang onto, he may sometimes fall back if you're doing it like this. So like this, you have him in this position where the bike is head point straight upwards and he's running on it. So for that, you get to the sound, the proper sounds for this mode. So pressing the button once, you get this. And then you get some basic warning sounds. So to follow it up, press the button again. And so with that, that comes to the nature of Tower Mode's purpose. Tower Mode, being based off a launch tower, is designed to launch Forza's bike into space with Forza on it. And this has an in-series explanation, because Forza's enemies, the Zodiarts, when they get to their final form, they have so much built-up energy inside them, that if Forza was to defeat them on Earth, it would cause massive collateral damage. So, with the help of the Power Dizer, Forza launches the Zodiart up into space and defeats them there. And so that's what necessitates Tower Mode here. But really, it's pretty cool how you've just got this position right here. You've got the bike attached to this nice tower. It all fits. One of the nicest things about this is that the only things holding it in place are the clip down here and the two clips on the side of the front wheel. You don't have this kind of big array of things holding onto it. So, it looks really nice like that, and it is really even cooler when you have the figure attached like that. Because you can basically replicate scenes of him launching into space in the show. And it it's really a nice thing it's really a nice and cool thing that Forza being astronaut based 
can actually be launched into space like an astronaut. And of course, you can just unclip the bike on the sides like this and just attach it. Like so. If you want to, you can even use the sounds. Well, I'll show you. And so you can play with it like that. And a nice little feature about that sound is, you know, at, at the end, you hear that little uh, gleam sound. That's a kind of a neat little thing. It's, you know, if it's kind of one of those things that... It's kind of uh, cartoonish, in a way. Because it's kind of like the sound of those kind of, you know kind of twinkles in the sky when something is launched really high up into the air that goes out of sight. That's a nice fun little sound effect there. So, with that we can just turn right back into Dyser mode. And I can finish up the review. And just for, and just to make this completely clear, the specifier for the change between the sounds for Dyser mode, vehicle mode, and tower mode is the right arm. So getting that back there, and repositioning the legs. Just like so. And get the arms back in place. And one of the things about the Machine Sigler is that the kickstand the is not the best kickstand because it doesn't quite go down too far. So, unless you have it positioned just right, it may at times have a little bit of difficulty kind of standing on its own. In fact, one of the things you can do to help that is, if you have a figure on it, you can basically lower the leg to kind of act as a makeshift kickstand. Like so. So... All in all, this is a this is really a good set. I mean, at this point, it's the only way to get a big figure-sized version of the Machine Sigler, and this is probably the only real toy version of the Power Dizer that's going to be made. And this could even hypothetically be used for upcoming SH Figure Arts for their releases because. From what's been shown, the FMCS figures are in scale with SH Figure Arts figures. So even though the bike is designed for FMCS Forze, it can be used with Figure Arts Forze. Plus, it is really nice that the Power Dizer has the three transform the three modes transformation, the compatibility with the bike. All the sounds include, plus it has a pretty good amount of posability. And in terms of size, it's interesting because it's kind of a medium sized figure. It's bigger than an action figure, but it's smaller than something like, say, a Sentai Robo. So it's the kind of thing that you can display on a shelf, and even pose on a shelf. And plus, 
The bike is a really nice companion piece to both the figure here and of the FMCS figures. So if you have the FMCS figures or if you plan to get the figure arts for the figures, then I would suggest picking this up. On its own it is pretty good and the good thing about it is that it includes everything you need to play with all its functions. So, really, it is something you can buy on its own, but I would suggest buying this as a companion piece to the Forza figures. But overall, it's definitely a very fun set, and really worth buying and worth playing with. So thanks for watching, thanks for watching it throughout the year of 2011, and I hope to entertain you guys more in the coming year of 2012. So see you guys then, and for now, Happy New Year's. Or Happy New Year. I guess with the end of the year coming, I am a little bit uh, flustered. I mean, it's the end of the year. So, you know, it's pretty big. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed my reviews this year, and I hope you guys enjoy my reviews next year, too. So, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share my channel for more videos. And until next year, this is KRX50, riding off.